All right, Sagar, what are you looking at? Well, if you're too online, you're already familiar with what I'm about to describe. But if you're not, buckle up, folks, because it's one of my newfound but incredible pet peeves. <laughs> the culture warification of basic health. Since myself getting into fitness and nutrition science this year, I have been mystified by just how much health decisions and what you eat and what you do is politicized. It started, of course, and most of you saw, with MSNBC's now infamous op-ed, How Fitness is Far-Right and Fascist. But we've gone even deeper down the rabbit hole. It went into overdrive over the weekend when a promo for Tucker Carlson's new special on declining testosterone level amongst males went viral. It admittedly is kind of hilarious. <laughs> Let's watch. One of the biggest stories of our lifetimes is the total collapse in testosterone levels in American men. Those levels are declining by roughly 10% per decade, completely changing the way people are at the most fundamental level. NIH does not seem interested in this at all. It's not a big deal. We think it is a huge deal. So we want to know what's causing it and what you can do about it. That's the topic of our upcoming documentary called The End of Men. Here's a look at the trailer. I welcome this opportunity to speak to the people of America about a subject which I believe to be most important, and that is the subject of physical fitness. A country uh, is as strong, really, as its citizens, and I think that mental and physical health go hand in hand. There is nothing, uh, I think, uh, more unfortunate than to have uh, soft, chubby, fat-looking children. I hope that all of you will join and everybody in the United States to make sure that our children participate fully in a vigorous and adventurous life, which is possible for them in this very rich country life. There's been a 50% decline in sperm counts in the uh, last 40 years, along with a precipitous decline in testosterone production. We're headed for a calamity, and that's not hyperbole, it's not exaggeration, it's just a mathematical fact. Would you recommend uh, young men to tan their balls? To what? Once the society collapses then, you're in hard times. Well, hard iron sharpens iron, as they say. And those hard times inevitably produce men who are tough, men who are resourceful, men who are strong enough to survive. And then they go on to re-establish order, and so the cycle begins again. Okay, a little over the top, maybe. But something makes me think that the people freaking out about this are protesting just a little bit too much. Here's a sampling. Adam Kissinger of neocon warmongering fame said, quote, this is actually real. Evidently, he likes men without shirts, which may explain the Putin obsession. I guess calling him gay in a Russophile in the same tweet. Others begged Tucker to pray his gay away <laughs> or made some version of a Florida joke. I will admit some of them were kind of funny. But- at a deeper level, it did disturb me because it's clear message here. Caring about testosterone and featuring people who use proven therapies to increase it, and in general talking or thinking about male hormone health, is apparently anathema to a lot of the liberal intelligentsia who will either mock you as gay or less of a man for doing so. It's actually quite homophobic when you think about it. And look, I get it. Tucker is a cultural lightning rod, but what he's featuring there is a very real and actually terrifying phenomenon. Declining levels of testosterone are having macro sociological consequences on our entire society. In fact, even back in 2007, it was apparent that U.S. male testosterone levels have been dropping by 1% per year since the 1980s. In a more stark term, at the time, a 60-year-old man in 2004 had approximately 83% of the same testosterone levels that a 60-year-old man in 1987 had. Now you might say, okay, so what? Why should I care? Well, at a basic human level is this. Hormones basically affect everything. Your mental state, your weight, how you feel today, how you, well you sleep, recovery. You will all understand this if you have an endocrinology problem, but we almost never talk about it for everybody else. At the basic levels, testosterone, in the words of Dr. Andrew Huberman, makes effort feel good, especially within males. Though, of course, women have nascent levels of testosterone too. It is linked intrinsically with the drive to accomplish, and that drive, of course, is what propels an entire civilization. At a health level, low testosterone levels are really dangerous. It makes it harder to build muscle. It leads to more cases of osteoporosis. It's linked to heart attacks, depression, decreased energy levels, and fatigue. When you really think about it, at a society-wide level, it's catastrophic. We're talking here about a vital hormone to nearly 50% of every American. Now, there are a variety of reasons that testosterone is declining. Online, people like to talk about plastics and seed oils and other things. All of them are absolutely responsible for population-wide drops for sure. But in my view, and my discussion with the experts, it's obesity and bad lifestyle that are the worst culprits. The latter two obviously are intrinsically linked. 
If you are obese, you are far more likely to have low testosterone levels. It means you are more likely not to engage in physical behaviors, which f stimulate testosterone production. Obviously, obesity is multi-causal, but obesity itself is deeply linked to the current crisis in testosterone. The other problem is sleep and alcohol use. Bad sleep dramatically lowers testosterone, especially in healthy young men. And of course, we live right now in a country where the majority of the youth population is chronically underslept by even the most gener gen generous recommended hours of sleep that one should get a night. Combine skyrocketing alcohol use with negatively affects sleep and testosterone, you have a very clear picture of what's going on here. Being feet, fat, sleeping badly, drinking, and using too much weed while not being active is a recipe for disaster. The good news is at least now you know. If you manipulate even one of those factors, it is likely to help you. If you tackle all four and you have, let's say, even a 50 or 25% reduction in some of those behaviors while you move your body more, in just a few, few months, you will feel like a completely different human being. Take it from me. I don't even recognize the person I was 10 months ago, both mentally and physically. But of course, beyond the most important factors, there are other things you can do. Which brings us back to this culture war nonsense. Many men with testosterone in dangerous territory or who are aging opt for outright testosterone replacement therapy. Now, for those who do not fall in that territory but are still looking for the benefits of a testosterone boost, there are various herbs and supplements that you can take. I personally, I take one by Derek for More Plates, More Dates on the YouTube channel. You can go check that out for yourself if you are interested. However, one of them, the last featured in the documentary, is red light therapy, which has actually become very popular online recently. This too was ridiculed on Twitter with quote, testosterone, uh, testicle tanning trending for the entire day. Wow, that's a real tongue twister. <laughs> Once again, I am dismayed because not a single one of these people appears to know that guys, red light therapy actually works and is well-rooted within science. And as Dr. Andrew Huberman of Stanford University noted, quote, many people consider phototherapy modern new age biohacking, but Niels Fenson was actually awarded a Nobel Prize in 1903 for its exact discovery. Light is a powerful modulator of cellular function. I will let the good doctor explain to you how this all works on this podcast. It's far too complicated for me to try and summarize. But I can tell you, personally, I just got a red light panel, with a, which has a, a myriad of benefits, including, yes, for increasing your testosterone. Low testosterone levels are nothing to laugh about. When you consider it in the context of declining sperm count, it is downright terrifying what the consequences may be. The current war to accept fatness, minimize the health effects of obesity, minimize the real costs of drug and alcohol use, and then mock discussion of testosterone, it's a war on biology and on well-being itself. Do not let the culture war have this one. Please just take care of yourselves. You should care about your hormone health so that you can live longer and spend more quality time with your spouse or your kids or your friends. And do not let people mock people for caring about it, no matter who that person is. So I know it's cringe, Crystal. Okay, uh, but I'm not gonna to, lie you have that to the admit, Tucker thing was weird. Well, cable news is ripping us apart, dividing the country, making it impossible to function as a society, and making it impossible to know just what is true and what is false. But the good news is they are failing and they know it. That is why we're building something new, a new mainstream, a healthier one, something more trustworthy, something that we are going to need in one of the most pivotal times in American history. We are building up here for the midterms, for the upcoming presidential election, but we need your help. So if you can help us out by becoming a premium member today at breakingpoints.com, we're trying to change America for the better and the entire world. So what are you waiting for, guys? Go to breakingpoints.com and sign up and help us build a new mainstream.